so we now have our sea perches, we have our motor assemblies, we've given our motor assemblies a few minutes to cure. Um, we could touch them right now if we wanted, but we're going to hold off because we're going to build our control boxes and they'll be able to use our control boxes to test them. Okay, so building our control boxes. Some people would say we're just going to dive in, throw all the parts on and do this all willy-nilly, but not here, not, not today. Not us. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the power cord ready. So even though we're all ready to work on the circuit board, we're not quite ready yet. So what we need to do is grab the speaker wire, which is the silver and gold wires. Okay. And we're going to need to split the two strands apart from each other for about three inches on both ends. Now, if you can't get it with your nails, you can always use a pair of scissors or the snips to split it apart a little bit. And you're going to want to do that on both ends of that cable, about the same amount. Okay. Now, once you do that, we're going to want to strip the ends of the wires on both ends. One end about a quarter of an inch, and the other one about mm, five-eighths. This is the 18 gauge wire. So if you put it in the 18 slot, squeeze it, it should pull right off. What we need to do now is take our alligator clips and the boots for the alligator clips. Okay. Now the most important part about this is you need to get the boots on the wires prior to installing the alligator clips. Because if you don't, you have to take the alligator clips off to put the boots on. And that is very frustrating after you've done all this work to have to take it all apart again. Does it matter which one it goes on? Well, yes and no. It matters that you're consistent so that when you hook it to your control box, the positive wire has the red boot on it, goes to the positive terminal in the control box. The nomenclature for that is you use the copper wire as your positive wire or the red terminal. Mm -hmm. Okay, And then the silver one becomes our negative terminal and gets the black boot. So you slip it over at the top. You slip it over and slide it in. Okay, and then the next thing you're going to do is do the black one because if you don't do both of them, you will forget to do the second one. All right, now you're going to take the silver alligator clips and you're going to want to loosen the screw that's on the top. All the way off or just loosen it? Not all the way probably three or four turns loose, but while it still needs to be connected. Thank you. Glad I could be helped. All right, now you're going to put the wire through the center of the alligator clip, correct, and up around the screw. So you're going to want to angle it so it comes up through that hole. Okay, and now you want it to go around the screw Clockwise. Clockwise looking at the screw. Clockwise looking down at the screw. And if you get jammed up, go ahead and pull it back out, tight, twist the wire to tighten it up, and then try again. And then can I tighten it once it's up? Yep. Okay. Once you're happy you got it up, put your fingers on either side of that screw, and then screw it down. The reason we do it clockwise, so as you tighten the screw, you're pulling the wire into the screw and not pushing it out. And that helps keep everything put together. To get those rubber boots over, okay, the best way to do that is to take that alligator clip and go ahead and clip it onto about as thick of a thing as you can get in the jaw. And what that does is it depresses the button here on the back and makes it real easy to slide the boot right up and over. Okay, if you try to do that the other way, you have to fight over that tab. All right, so go ahead and... Excellent. All right, so now that's ready, we'll go ahead and put that aside, and now that becomes another component that's going to go into our printed circuit board. Okay, so you ready to do your circuit board? I'm ready to do my circuit board. Are you ready to do your circuit board? Yep. Okay, so the very first part we're going to install is the fuels holder. 
that's identifiable as being the smallest part that we have. Okay, And that goes into the slot on the board labeled F1, right smack dab in the middle. Okay. And you go to the top. Yeah. Right. You want to be on the side of the board that says put components this side. Okay, and that will be the side that has all the white writing on it. Okay, now do me a favor and flip the board over. Okay, read to me what the writing right down there on the bottom says. Put parts on other side. Okay, so if you're reading put parts on other side, you're on the wrong side. All right? Okay. So, now, what we're going to do is take a small piece of tape to hold that because if we don't, when we flip this over to solder it, the part's it's going to fall out. Right so about a one inch piece of tape. Oops. And just tape right over. Okay, And that's only for as long as it takes us to solder those two. Okay. And just like before, to solder that, we're going to put the iron right in between the post of the part and the board, and then we're going to add the solder. So now that that's on, go ahead and take the tape off. All right, and we're going to choose the next two short pieces on the board. In this case, that's the two push buttons. Okay. Those push buttons go in the top corners of the board. Now take a look at those. Go ahead and turn the board over and see if they're going to stay in place if you don't tape them in place. They will Pretty stay good. in place. All right, now turn it over and put it down on the table now. Okay. And now the fact that these are the tall parts on the board, they are held in place just by pushing down on the board. Wow. Okay, so now they'll stay in and flat. So what you'll want to do, now these components have five pins on each one. So in order to make sure that these go in and they're down and flat, we're just going to solder one pin on each switch. Then we can check it and make sure everything's flat before we make that commitment to do the rest of them. And I push down while I'm doing it? And you just, all you're going to have to do is lightly press on the board with, say, a pinky okay. as you're soldering. So now, we have one on each. Those parts are what we would call tacked into place. Okay, okay so now they're not going to move, but we can make sure that they're level on the board and everything's in the right place before we can go back through now and solder up the rest of those solder terminals. Okay? And it doesn't matter which order you solder them. No, what you will want to do is alternate from one switch to the other. Okay. okay, and that allows the switch some time to cool off before jumping back over to the other one. So that's all of those. All right. So our next one is going to be our switches, our big toggle switches. So if you take a look, these toggle switches come with all this hardware on them. So the first thing we're going to want to do is take all of that hardware off. That means both nuts and both sets of washers. Okay. One of the problems with these switches, okay, if you look at them, they have a ridge down the center that would prevent them from sitting flat. See that ridge right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. And if we were to just put this on the board, it could rock side to side. Right. All right. Now, in general, that's probably not a big problem, but let's take a look at our control box. The top of our control box has two holes that these switches come up through. So if they're both rocked to the outside, we run the risk of not being able to get the lid on. So what are we to do? Put them on the control box first. Oh, we could use the control box to hold the switches in the right location. Go ahead and drop yours in. See if this is going to work. Okay. And then use that to hold everything in place and lined up as we solder it. Hey, guess what? What? I bet if you put that on that box, It'll stay that right it would there. be a nice stable stand too. Look Voila. at that. Look at this. We're like, like we're professionals. Now switch is a good idea to switch back and forth again. Again, you're going to want to do a single one because remember these are the ones that That's we know right. rock all over the place. So do the single one. And so then you're going to want to do a single one and then we can check the alignment to make sure that everything's good. Okay. 
So we'll now go ahead and check our alignment to make sure that we're happy. So if you take a look at this one, it has just a little bit of spring where it's not really down flat. Mm -hmm. So what we can do without soldering any more on, just go ahead and reheat that one. Okay, and now I'm going to hold the board flat. Now when you let up and let it cool, it will now have recentered itself. Okay, now the thing is, if you had done all of those, we would have had to get all six of those hot in order to get it to reset. Okay, so now that you're happy, you can go ahead and alternate from side to side and do the rest of those connections. So now, let's take a look at what we have. We have our push button switches in. We have our toggle switches in. Never hurts to try them, just to make sure that everything still works. The earlier you find things that are broken, the easier it is to replace them. Okay, we have our fuse holder in. So what's left now is our RJ45 jack. And that will go into all these holes and snap into position. So it may require a little bit of force to get it to pop down and snap into place. All right. So now you can put it right back into that stand to hold it. Okay. And now you have eight very tiny little pins to solder in place. And not solder okay. them together. And not solder them together. So you want to use just a little bit of solder for each one as you do it. And as you do it, You'll notice you'll be able to use the iron and push the pin a little bit to the side. To so like the outside of the. So it doesn't matter, but what you're using that is you're gonna by doing that you're making sure that the pin is touching the circuit board and your iron all at the same time, okay. and it will allow the heat to flow better. Right. Okay. And remember, these are very small holes, so little bits of solder will go a long way. Right. All right. That also take a look to make sure you didn't miss any because with eight of them there's a very good chance you can miss one and you've got a nice set of very good joints. Next thing we need to do is get our power cable put together. All right now that power cable needs to go through the hole in the top of our box. Okay now once it's through about say an inch, inch and a half in, tie a knot in the cable and again this will prevent if you pull on that wire from pulling on the PCB board uh, and possibly damaging it. Okay. Then the next thing you're going to do is take your copper wire and it goes into the terminal called red on your board and the other one goes down through the top just like any other component. It goes from the top down and to get it to stay in place, once you push it through you can fold it off to the side, and that will help lock it into place. And then get the other one ready to go. And while this one, because the cable is actually coming through this top, mm -hmm. is a little less graceful, you can still use this to hold it in place. Okay, again, it's just not quite as graceful all in all. Okay, but in this case, all you're going to be soldering is those two connections right, right onto that board. And because of the size of these wires, don't be afraid to put a whole lot of solder into this. That copper wire will really wick up the solder quite a bit. So when you're done with that, if you have pieces of that wire that are sticking up, you can go ahead and take the flush cutters and trim them off. Now be careful that this is a process that could cause pieces of that wire to go flying across the room. So safety glasses are not only good for you, but anybody in the vicinity. All right, now your controller is complete and we are ready to mount it into the box. Okay, now the screws that we use to mount the circuit board into the box are the small silver ones. And we will be using a screwdriver. If you have the opportunity to have one that has a magnetic tip, it makes it a little bit easier. Or you can use a regular screwdriver and just put a magnet on the shaft and it will work the same way. Okay. Okay. So now that goes through with those holes through the holes in the side of the box. All right. 
and you may have to press the jack into its big square hole a little bit. It's a relatively snug fit. It's supposed to pop through? A yeah, it, it, it pops through to flush. All right, and now when you do that, you should see the holes line up to the little on, its on the bottom. Line. Yep. So grab your screwdriver and put in your four screws. All right. One last part before we put the top on is the fuse. Now, in some cases, fuses will come already cut, and some of you might have a fuse that still has the paper attached. If you have the ones with the paper attached, all you'll need to do is cut these so you have about a quarter inch of leg remaining. Okay. Since you have a cut one, you'll want to put that in. Now when you put that in, you're going to want to use two fingers. All right, Because the socket it goes into is a little bit fragile, if you just take it and push it straight down, you run the risk of it rocking and breaking. So you want to use two fingers to insert, and it's just going to be a very slight insertion. And it doesn't matter what side's up. It doesn't matter which side is which. You do want the wire sides towards the board. Yep, now you can go ahead and put your cover on your control box. Go ahead and kind of push the wires down into place. Make sure everything lines up, and then you'll use the black screws to screw the cover on. The final step after you get your screws in will be to put those caps on your push buttons. And those just press on. All right, and there you have your finished control box. You are ready to test your motors.